جود مورنينج جود مورنينج رح نبلش بدرينك اليوم الصبح بس مش حيعلى درينك كوفي درينك رح نبلش اليوم بذا ليتل ماريونيت تعرفت عليهم حبيتهم بيعملوا شيء كثير حلو رح نقضي نص نهار تقريبا بروسري رح نشوف القهوه كيف تنعمل كيف بيفكروا فيها كيف تنخلط من الاول للاخر ونخلص بدرينك 16% سميلز كوفي تيست كوفي ما بتحسوا بالالكوهول ابدا Smooth, refreshing, feels like wine, smells like heaven. ريحة sweetness, قهوة. اوف خليكم معي لاخر الفيديو تتشوفوا هيدي شو لانه بتعقد. Hi, I'm Noel. Noel Mekjian. from Lebanon, came from Lebanon in 1991 and been working in Australia for 30, 33 years. At the moment, I'm working as a coffee machine technician at the Little Marinette. It's one of the best companies in the world. Hi Anthony, uh, we are the Little Marionette. My name's Ed and today we're going to drink some coffee. Uh, we're going to visit the coffee roastery. Uh, we're in an industrial estate so the footpath is not very, not very smooth. Um, and uh, we'll walk you through roasting and what the Little Marionette does. During COVID, um, we everything changed. The the business landscape changed. We didn't know what was going to happen, and so we looked at ways to support our clients and our cafe partners with surviving and hopefully um, coming out the other side stronger. And so we invested in a bakery that was called Goose. That was started by a really lovely man from Japan. Um, and to see if we could make it work and if we liked it and we love it um, and so it's become uh, dawn dawn and dusk and it's dawn by day dusk by night dawn is pastry dusk is pizza and it's all about the story of flour and how we use different flowers in different ways and the origins of flour and this is paul he's a bright beautiful flower you're gonna say hello hi <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Paul, Paul Anthony. Anthony how are you? <laughs> so I'm making Queen Aman right now. So last rolling. So Queen Aman basically croissant with layered with sugar and vanilla. We do croissant and then afternoon usually bread, but I'm mostly in charge with the pastry right now. So yeah, pretty much. Uh, so the whole idea of this counter is to introduce people to behind the scenes so they can see Addy um, in his mastery making croissants, pen au chocolat, whatever the product is, and you can see how it's made from go to work. Hi, I'm Jodie. Um, I'm a third generation Lebanese person in Sydney, Australia. Uh, my parents are Lebanese, my grandparents Lebanese as well obviously. They're from a town in the north of Lebanon called Hardin, up in the north. Uh, so they emigrated to Australia after both wars um, and my parents moved south to uh, Wollongong. So I'm halfway between Wollongong and Sydney and yeah and here I am in Sydney and I happen to be related to Ed, who owns Little Marionette, a thriving coffee business. I'm a jazz drummer, a drummer. I play um, music professionally, luckily enough, in Sydney. 
and um, I have the pleasure of playing at different venues and hopefully getting into some study soon to pursue a doctorate and heading back to the States in New York. So um, that's what I do, lucky to play music. <laughs> G'day, um, Little Marionette, where did it come from? Um, it started about, well it really started about 28 years ago when I first made um, coffee. I wasn't very good and um, and it was it was a part-time job and then uh, it, it grew out of more than that. I travelled, I, um, I helped my brother-in-law open a cafe called Poppy's named after my niece um, and, and he it was all about the music, it was all about the culture, it was about the lounges, it was about the experience. So we did, yeah, Poppies was all about um, the, the culture of music and couches and, and um, being a part of an extension of people's living rooms, making people feel comfortable in your environment and, um, and that it was, just, it was just their place as much as it was ours. Um, and then I went traveling again, I bounced between um, Europe and Asia and Australia just backpacking and, uh, and the culture in Australia was developing around coffee and Europe was a more traditional style of coffee and an older style of coffee and so Australia was really progressing and, um, and that stood out. So I came back to Australia and, and uh, my brother-in-law sold poppies and on the back of that I just started exploring and every cent that I earned I pumped back into teaching myself how to roast and make coffee and, um, and it's progressed that was 17, 18 years ago when Marionette started, about 16, 17 years ago. Yeah, it just came out of the idea of wanting to serve and, um, and make great coffee. Uh, the name, The Little Marionette, um, I, was, uh, I was drinking a bottle of port. I might have been a bit tipsy at the time and I just wanted to find something that meant um, bring the coffee to life. So, um, and it means pulling all the right strings from crop to cup to bring the coffee to life. So whether it's uh, sourcing the right coffee, working with the right partners to bring that coffee in, um, roasting it properly, blending it properly, putting it in bags properly and then delivering it to our customers, one, one of which has just walked in, Charbel here, um, and, and then training them and making sure their machinery is all serviced properly because every single element of the process uh, is just as important as the other and say that one part is more important, that the green bean is more important than the coffee training, which is more important than the equipment is. It's, you can't have one without the other. So um, yeah, it all, it all grew out of uh, just a slow organic um, love for coffee and service and hospitality. And here we are, yeah, 17 years later. We started out of a hole in the wall in Balmain and that, that was quite some time ago and that was only about 14 square metres which is tiny so 140 square feet and then um, we were renting other people's roasters um, using other people to roast for us as well because we just didn't have time facilities um, and then eventually we managed to get a great little spot in the back streets of Annandale and that was uh, the Traff um, on Trafalgar Street and we had some great team come through there over the years and uh, eventually we just grew organically we've never really had a sales team it's all been word of mouth and people calling us up to say we love your coffee can we use it in our venue um, and we've built some great friendships and partnerships over the years some of the long my very second customer ever my very first customer ever was my first boss in hospitality um, he hated me and thought I was useless when I was about 12 years old um, and I, I was useless and, um, and then, what, 16 years later, he ended up being my first wholesale customer and that was Sasha at, uh, at Marrickville Road Cafe and then my second wholesale customer was Ten Buck Alley off William Street and a guy called Mr Nick Shapakis and Mr Nick Shapakis is now a good friend of mine and uh, we're 17 years on, he doesn't own a cafe but we still catch up all the time, he called me last week just to see how we were. And it's just grown organically out of word of mouth from that. So we're now across Australia, we do Alice Springs, which is in the middle of Australia near Uluru. And we do all the way up to Cairns, down to Melbourne. Um, we were exporting to the USA, just sending some coffee over because people inquired. So we've branched out across to the USA. Um, 
and that's been um, a real journey. Uh, it's been a great journey. We've got a great team over there um, and some really good cafe partners there. And then in the UK about 10 years ago, two of the boys that um, uh, were working with me, who we become best mates, uh, they moved over to the UK and went, there's a huge opportunity here for great coffee. And um, they founded the Roasting Party, which is um, sort of like a, I don't know how you'd call it, sister company. Um, and it's got all the same values as the little marionette. So we, we started that together and that was a long, long time ago. And that's grown organically as well. Again, no salespeople and they're going from strength to strength over there. Um, and then now between the UK and Australia is the Middle East and, um, and we're stopping over there on the way through every single time. And I was in uh, Dubai this time last year almost, um, around April and started exploring the opportunities there. Um, it takes time to, to, um, to work out the right approach because it's a very different um, uh, coffee consumption market. Um, but people are passionate about coffee there. Uh, people love talking about coffee there. I visited some great little cafes and roasteries there and so it'd just be great to be part of the culture. And so we're looking at expanding um, that way over the next couple of years. We're not in a rush, um, but hopefully we'll be able to bring um, some of what we love over there, whether it's different or the same, or just uh, just sharing great coffee and great stories. And uh, we'll see how long that takes. It's never fast. خليني جرب سألته شو اسمه قال لي كرواسون تويست. It's uh, discovery of the day. اليوم جربه يمكن بس زين عجينة الكرواسون بس لأنه أصغر تحمصت أكثر. كتير 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 خفيفة. اسيا and then crunch من جوا فليكي مثل الكرواسون again حط عليها ملح very flaky very crispy مثل البسكوي خارج لبنة أو مع لبنة عم بحس الزبدة بين سنينه الملح عم بخبط من هون ومن هون have you tried this? This definitely needs lebne and olive oil. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. It's so good. It's outstanding. When I have a poisson pastry, I want it to be greasy. Yeah. Mm. And this and is delicious. Shiny fingers. Because of the amount of yeah, butter. It's good job. Good, good, like, good job. Good job. Even just simple, like, like ricotta and roasted cherry tomatoes. Like, that's simple. Across the top. Excellent. Do you know what I mean? So, good job. So we're just coming back down to the roastery now. I've seen a bit Christian. Um, and this is the little marionette. This is where all the magic happens. This is where we, we roast the coffee, um, we bag the coffee, we blend the coffee, we send it out. Uh, we do all our coffee training here. We do all our cupping and quality control here. Every day is a new day, uh, new challenges. Uh, today we're going to be doing some uh, quality control and some tasting of of new season coffees. So this roaster here is the beast. This is what the bulk of the roasting is done on. Um, it's a 1961 built uh, G75, UG75. It's made by Probat, it's an old German company. They've been building coffee roasters for over 100 years. Um, we sourced that one out of Belgium. It's been running non-stop for or 82 years pretty much. Uh, we do rebuilds on them. When they arrive in Australia, we have to do a lot of modification and a lot of adaptation. Um, as you can see, Ryan's on the roaster there and the computer's our, our data collation. Um, we use that data to quality control, but we don't use automation. You'll see Ryan adjust a yellow lever, which is a basic ball valve, and everything is super manual, and that's the difference between our flavor and others, I believe, because everything we do is super manual and we train people from ground up here. Um, every restaurant you go to, every chef has a different pinch of salt. Um, our pinch of salt comes into the way we control the heat applied to the roast. And, and as you can hear in the background, you can hear the coffee cracking, coffee cracks, um, popcorn pops, our coffee cracks. We never reach second crack, second crack. Um, often means that you're over-compromising the coffee, going too far. Um, 
whatever food you buy, we source really good origins and really good beans and we like them to speak for themselves. We don't ever want to um, massacre those beans. We want to we want to nurture them and look after them and look after everything the farmer's done. Um, so that means not going too long and not going too short on the roast profile. You don't want it to go too well done and you don't want to go too raw. Right now uh, we're in the thick of development time, which is after first crack. It's where we caramelise the sugars and balance out the acidity, flatten it out a little bit. Uh, we're roasting for espresso on this, which means we don't want a high acidity and we want the best caramelisation we can of sugars. Ryan is about to drop the roast and straight after the roast, we can get him to explain to us what all the graphs mean. So this one is a 1961 Probat, 75 kilos. We don't charge 75 kilos into it. We like to leave some air in there so the roast can be developed properly. This one is a mongrel. Um, we inherited this when we took over a site in Annandale called The Trap, which was our first roasting site. Um, it roasted delicious coffee. It was just, you had to work really hard to get the flavor out of it, but it's amazing. Uh, we've been trying to adapt this to electric so we can run it off solar. Um, we're pretty close. It's pretty amazing, but um, still needs a little bit more development. And then this guy here is our 90 kilo, our GG90. Um, 1958 built. We brought this one over from Germany, rebuilt in Germany. Um, it, it's a great roaster, we love it. It's here just in case we grow. Uh, it's here as a contingency for when we're rebuilding this roast, if this roast is ever out of commission, um, this one backs us up. Uh, and then in theory, we're never compromising flavor, dates, timing, anything. people slurp wine, we slurp coffee. Um, some people spit it out. Uh, I generally drink the whole thing and by the end of it I'm just a bit... <laughs> um, this is quality control um, and quality control and some new season coffees as well. So we, we buy coffee from flavour. It's all about the flavour. Flavour first and then we work backwards from there. Uh, we, the way we like our blends to be is different to the way everyone else likes their blends to be. Um, and depending on what we're buying, whether it's a Colombian or a Honduras or any other Central American or Papua New Guinean, each one has to sort of hit a certain flavour profile for us. Um, and so today we're just doing quality control and tasting after some tweaks to the roaster yesterday, some excitement in the roaster yesterday. So, um, So when I'm inhaling the coffee, uh, I breathe air through it and it really opens it up just like a wine. Um, and then I'll come back through and I'll let it sit in my mouth. When I'm breathing through, I'm looking for all the flavour notes, all the, prof all the uh, acidity, the chocolate, the caramel. Is there any fruitiness to it? Um, is the acidity a vegetal acidity or a fruit acidity? We don't like vegetal acidities in our, in our blends. Um, we're looking for things that complement our blends in a different way. We're also looking for body. Will it add body to the espresso? If it's espresso, if it's filter, is it light and delicate with a balanced body? Um, what's the mouthfeel like? Is it, is it a good mouthfeel? Is it a warm mouthfeel? Um, do you want to keep it in your mouth? Uh, which is a big one that we do as well. So we're looking for that. And then I let the coffee cool down. And as the coffee cools down, we'll do another round of tasting. And has it held its sugar? Has it held its sweetness? Has it turned bitter and acrid? Um, we're looking for the balance across the board. So we're looking for 20 on different factors just depends on what bean it is. And each bean we're looking for something different. We're not looking for the same thing out of Colombian as we are for Ethiopian. Ethiopian has fruit uh, and vibrancy to a blend. And so we don't put Ethiopian in all our blends. We put Ethiopian in our um, house blend and legs 11. Um, but for Sanchez, which is our, our main roast for espresso bars, we look for chocolate and caramel. Uh, so we don't put ATI in that. Yeah. So every time the door of that machine opens up, someone has to do this exercise again? The next day, yeah. Sometimes the same day, um, but we do this every day, um, sometimes twice a day. And then when we're in new season buying, which is down the other end of the table, that's not on the table today, um, that will happen once a week, thereabouts.
thanks for visiting us here at uh, the Little Marionette. And uh, as we leave, uh, it, we call it a roadie, a roadie in Australia. Uh, this is a, a coffee liqueur, a coffee vodka uh, that we make in-house. It's got espresso, cold brew, a filter brew. We make a, another liqueur with vanilla and some other ingredients, which I won't tell you. Um, and um, yeah, it's delicious over ice. If you put a little bit of milk in it, it's like a chocolate milkshake. It's a little bit dangerous. Uh, it's only 14%. Uh, so it's like drinking a glass of wine. This is probably a quarter of a glass of wine right now. Um, it's a good heart starter in the morning. It's a good all-nighter if you're going out on a Friday night. Uh, or it's a ready-made espresso martini. So you can shake it and it keeps its foam and froth. Even better over ice, even better through a martini shaker. It gives a greater head. So, Thanks for visiting us today at the Marionette Roastery. Um, hopefully we'll see more of you, whether it's in Australia or, or somewhere else in the Middle East. That's all I can say. Well, I'm Ed's brother. Ed owns Little Marionette, uh, which is the venue you are in right now. Um, I'm his brother. I started a tea company with him, I don't know how long ago? A long time ago, but I tried to get you to get into the coffee. You tried to get me into coffee, but... You were too important for that with your acting. Well, and, I wasn't uh, then, but I am now. <laughs> and now the, now the acting's taken <laughs> off, and, uh, and he's famous, and I'm not. And, um, I'm not famous. And, uh, Shall I get one of those? He's got hair on his head, and I don't. Um, and, um, and, yeah, hilarious. Um, <laughs> and um, now he comes here for free coffee. And, uh, I abuse the star. I Free come in, throw things on the ground and leave. Free everything. Little brother. I don't have free t-shirts. We don't have t-shirts. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. Who uh, said t-shirt? Blue Circle Cold Brew. Coffee in a can. Straight up coffee and water. No preservatives, no flavourings, no colourings, no sweeteners. Straight up cold brew coffee in a can. Delicious. <laughs>